This PowerPoint begins with the historical record of just a few communications between the Christ and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. This was one of the photographs sent to Yahweh's email by his personal secretary at the time, Archbishop Georg Ganswain. Underneath that photograph, Sunday, March 10th, 2013, this was Rome time when it was sent at 10.24pm from Pope Emeritus Benedict. It is the moment, it is at the moment 4am in the morning here in Castel Gandolfo. Now, that was a very quick add-on from the previous email that had been sent where, uh, just minutes before, hello, this is Archbishop Georg, personal secretary to His Holiness. Yes, the Pope is asleep and will check your answer to his questions first thing when he wakes up. I am sorry, very sorry for the confusion. He was sitting at the computer the whole night and early morning anticipating your responses. We are sorry he cannot see them now. And this was after uh, Pope Benedict had actually asked the Christ what he thought about Vatican II. Here is Archbishop Georg Ganswain. This was sent to us through uh, Pope Benedict's private email. This is Archbishop George Ganswain, is the personal secretary to His Holiness, Prefect of the Pontifical Household and is the titular bishop of the Diocese of Urbs Salvia, Italy. He will serve the new Pope as well as Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. He was also his secretary when he, the Pope, was just a cardinal and has known him for a very big majority of his life. My name is Sister Maria della Rosa. I helped the Holy Father make this biography. Born July 30th, 1956, ordained priest May 31st, 1984, ordained bishop on January 6th, 2013. This is another photograph. This is a photo from after the Holy Father's Rosary Walk when we were returning home. So this is Archbishop Georg sending this to us. And I thank him. There you can see the response. It'll come up in a, another slide. This is Castel Gandolfo. It's actually Lake Albano is the, is the lake recognised as Castel Gandolfo, the area where the Apostolic Palace is, all part of the Vatican. I wrote in response to Archbishop Georg when he said that the uh, Pope had fallen asleep. I said, thank you Archbishop Georg, this is the Christ's wife. We appreciate the Holy Father awaiting Christ's responses. This is history in the making. Tuesday will make a time at a much more suitable hour for the Holy Father. The Christ has prepared, prepared a more detailed response regarding Vatican II. It is much too important to let go with his first brief summary. As well, the questions he listed awaiting an answer. He will give a more detailed response for you perhaps to read to him. Thank you in love and peace, JMGM, for the Christ. This is the introduction, uh, it's actually Maria Della Rosa who sent this along with the other photograph of Archbishop Georg. Hello, this is one of the Pope's staff members using the Holy Father's secret account momentarily. I'm going to tell you a little about ourselves because we felt that you don't have a good grasp at who we are. This is Father Giuseppe Cervello, born February 17th, 1975, ordained priest August the 5th, 1998. Father Giuseppe, the man kissing Pope's ring at a mass celebrated for the Pope's staff, is an assistant to Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI for use of technology. He turns on the Holy Father's computer every morning and tests it to see if the connection to the internet is strong. He was assigned to create a Facebook page citing all of the milestones in the pontiff's life and met Andrea Leinink on Friday. 
when she had to speak to the Roman pontiff Emeritus. So this is setting up the background for you to understand that these are real people, real friends of Pope Benedict and we are very concerned at what has become of them. However, as always, it's all in the numbers. Now, Giuseppe. The Pope himself was 24, 9, 6 weeks old when Giuseppe was reborn, which was February 17, 1975. The Hebrew Dictionary, 2496, from 2492, rock. In years, he was 47.48 years old, means to be in company with, to accord with, consent, which is exactly what was going on. The conversation with Father Giuseppe and myself was continual as the Christ was communicating through his personal email with Pope Benedict. Giuseppe was 1989 weeks old. Now this is all referencing to April the 3rd Australian time when we got notice of the invasion of the Pope's office and the arrest and then disappearance of Giuseppe himself. So 1989 weeks, epistello from 1909, 47, 24, to enjoin by writing, that is genitive, to communicate by letter for any purpose, write a letter unto. Now, of course, he was writing to me in particular through the Facebook messaging constantly, and he also translated the letter from the Pope Benedict XVI, written in Italian originally, was the original apostolic letter, but it was Giuseppe, with permission, who did the translation into English for us. So February 17, 1975 to April 3, 2013, Giuseppe was 38.12 years old. From 38.13, from infancy of a child. And in Hebrew is to make disgusted, which is certainly what Giuseppe was he was disgusted in our personal communications behind the scene. He was disgusted by a lot of things, but um, what was going on at this instant absolutely disgusted him from later communications. And of course, from infancy of a child, he was born for this very purpose, of course. So when Giuseppe translated the apostolic letter into English, it took him from 6.01 a.m. East Australian time on the 24th of March until March 26th at 1.40 p.m. And he was exhausted working around the clock and so apologetic for the delay. It was actually 55 hours and 38 minutes was the delay. 55.38. A divine response or revelation, answer of God. And here we see how the angels manipulate the righteous to achieve a divine message. Father Giuseppe asked the Pope Benedict the 16th if he could translate the apostolic letter from Italian to English so we could communicate it to our followers and spread it worldwide. So 55 hours and 35, sorry, 38 minute delay says it all. An answer of God, a divine response, as Giuseppe realised the letter would need to be translated. Now we had planned to fly to Rome for the Pope's 86th birthday, April the 16th, 2013, but we had to sell something first. <laughs> And then, thankfully, one of our saints sent us some money and this made it all possible to be here now, at this time, but not in time for April the 16th. We actually arrived in Rome on the 28th. We did help Dex to make his way to Rome to visit uh, Giuseppe and His Holiness, but this was stopped by Francis with the invasion of the Pope's office and removal of Giuseppe after learning that Dex would be in Rome on April the 3rd. So it all, they all very quickly got rid of um, Dex just before, sorry, uh, Giuseppe just before Dex arrived the very next day. The Pope was by then in confinement, nor communications were cut off. Giuseppe and Sister Maria Della Rosa were missing. Then began a long drawn out fake set of emails purporting to be Giuseppe, who sent from a house in Sicily. The story was saying the house was chosen by Francis and the occupant was an old friend of Giuseppe. And from there he was able to send emails on his friend's computer utter nonsense, a complete setup with questions like when will you be coming to Rome? Finally, the friend sends emails planning an escape 
end with an escape and Giuseppe being shot dead. Uh, after the shock of it all, we accuse the sender of being a fake. Now, getting back to um, Glastonbury Tor, yeah, I wanted to remind you of what we observed on May the 31st, 2013 at Glastonbury Tor, where an old church had been destroyed, leaving only the tower, St. Michael's, on the tour. Now, what was remarkable about that day was absolutely no shadows, if you remember from the previous upload. Now, the whole point being the name Michael is prominent, I'll read from Yah's perspective. In my family, my brother's father, Reginald Michael, my brother, Ronald Michael, his son, Michael Marshall, his wife, Michelle, no E on the end, his son, Michael, my brother's daughter, Michelle, my sister's son, Dean Michael, his sister Tanya married a Michael and my third wife Michelle and my uncle Mick. Why? Well, my blood has three unusual chromosomes, 3, 4 and 13, and that number is Michael in Greek. From the Revelation 12, 7, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Michael, Greek Dictionary 3, 4, 13. Of Hebrew origin, 4317, Michael, an archangel. I'm pointing this out because there is no such thing as coincidence, and although it is in the Bible, the translators changed the word to fulfill, and even then removed it from all but one verse. Here is St. Michael's Tor. We were there, May 31st, 2013. As you can see, no shadow, not from the tower itself, nor from anybody on the tour or approaching the tour. Now this all leads to Galatians 6.2, quoting, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's the Greek dictionary word for fulfill, 378, by implication to occupy, supply, to accomplish, fill up, fulfill, occupy, supply. And it's to accomplish by coincidence or obedience, now, originally it was God will prove and accomplish by coincidence. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so God will prove by coincidence the law of Christ. So this is what it's all about. The law of Christ, as he explains all things to you using all of the tools that he does. Not what the churches have been teaching, of course. It's all total. This is the book within the book. This is because it is all preordained, and so man limits the Almighty in predicting via prophecy what has already been accomplished in heaven, where the devil, Gael Ganswain, was cast out of heaven into a human body to play out what was already accomplished in heaven. I being the Almighty, then Jesus, and now Christ must also be the Comforter. And we know this is true because where I was born, in St Margaret's Catholic Maternity Hospital in Darlinghurst, Sydney, Australia, measures 3877 miles from the South Pole. And that number, 3877, is the number of verses in the King James 1611 Bible. It's the verse total for the word God. So the word God is found in that number of verses, 3,877 of them. And the home of my parent, Daphne Golightly, where I remained until I was 942 days old. Now, 942 is the verse total in the King James 1611 Bible with the word, the name, Jesus in it. So there's 942 verses in the King James 1611 with the word Jesus, the name Jesus in it. Now, the home of my parent, Daphne Golightly, measures to the South Pole 3,875 miles. 3875 is the number for the word comforter. Predicted to teach the world all things. I will now show you how I have exposed Lucifer as being George, or Gail Ganswain, the confidant and friend of Pope Benedict XVI. George Ganswain, the personal secretary of Pope Benedict XVI, allowed an imbecile, Francis, 
who ordered his investigators to invade the papal office, beat an 86-year-old man, knocking him to the floor, hitting him so hard that he was bleeding from his ear. And then when Father Giuseppe attempted to help him, beat him as well, all in the presence of Sister Maria Della Rosa, the Pope's biographer. Now, as you know, we were in contact through live emails and Facebook messaging when Father Giuseppe suddenly said bad news as I was communicating with him. Go to the Facebook page. I was at my page. Bad news. Ash says what? He said, go on the page. Ash says, it is not showing anything different on the scene. What is it showing? He says, Francis has found out this is our page. You can't message anymore. The page is scheduled to be deleted in 14 days. I was also told I am fired. Archbishop Georg or George remains working for Pope Francis. I leave tomorrow, though. His assistant hacked us, and they know Dex is coming. They won't allow him, they said. Christ is asking, this is me in response, Christ is asking if we can rent a house or an apartment and we can move the Holy Father into it. And in capital letters, Giuseppe responded, I can't, I'm leaving, leaving before he comes, and there will be a guard with me so that I don't get into into any trouble. This was all brought about because of the visit by Dex, who was going to interview uh, Giuseppe and Pope Benedict and upload his videos. Continuing in the conversation, Sister Maria has been moved to a convent somewhere and is not allowed to make any contact. I am forced to leave the Lazio region. I'm not even allowed to stay in Rome or Castel Gandolfo. They called me a traitor, giving support to the enemy. They are planning to have me removed of my priestly duties as well. So this was the communications uh, from Giuseppe that night. This was all occurring on April the 2nd, Rome time. It was already the 3rd of April in Australia. Now meanwhile, George Ganswain is back at the Vatican while Giuseppe and uh, uh, Pope Benedict and Sister Maria are at Castel. Gandolfo, that should read, not Dan Golfo. <laughs> Giuseppe would run the two words together in the spelling of it. And so we knew when he mentioned where they were, he would write Castel Gandolfo. So there was no way he could at any time be taken over by an illiterate Argentinian investigator or thugs who later told us they were not police, that Francis will only have a few nuns around him and his investigators. They began sending emails from the same computer used by Pope Benedict. The emails are saved on a database server and on our computers and then printed, laminated and kept for the written record. Now later in the week they said things boasting in a way what they were going to do at one stage saying Francis was not the Antichrist. He did not give a shit. They were the Antichrist. Here's as in Francis' only concern was that a respected theologian was crazy enough to think the Christ is back. Now Francis and George Ganswain were by then working together and aware what was going on. Ganswain had been moved to the same position he had held when Pope Benedict XVI was Pope. The affection between Benedict and Ganswain was reportedly like a father and son. Yet the son allowed without a word the atrocities being perpetrated against the Pope and his confidant and very good friend, Father Giuseppe. Now, quoting from the apostolic letter that Pope Benedict wrote, I refuse to follow what Brian Marshall said. How dare he write such a thing like Vatican III? Who is he to do that? This was his response when Pope Benedict presented him with Vatican III. Vatican III came after Pope Benedict asked me what I thought of Vatican II. It had been written over a three-year period by 2,500 Catholic theologians and academics, implemented in 1963. I skimmed it and saw how it was opening the door to all religions as a way into paradise, disregarding Jesus, reducing me, the Creator, to being insignificant, a totally Jewish influence. I replied to His Holiness, with a 49-point Vatican III, which reverses the dismantling of the church's structure. For example, the altar and the church orientation eastward as an expectation of the light of Jesus coming from the east to the west. Traditional things yet targeted for removal. I'd said that all suspected child molesters would be immediately removed from the church, suspended 
and a full inquiry made and if warranted by victim testimony would have these men handed over to the law and jailed for life. Homosexuals would not be tolerated and expelled from the church, banned as an unpardonable sin for a priest. I said I would introduce a new health protocol as we had demonstrated in New Guinea and Fiji curing all diseases from cancer to AIDS to diabetes and BD, etc. That each diocese would have a mint where an authorization code would be electronically sent from the church headquarters to print currency based on local infrastructure, eliminating the domination of nation's currency tied to a Rothschild central bank. Currency has to be based on the worth of the nation's people and workforce, as money has no value unless a person is prepared to exchange time or labour for it. In this way, the farmers or tradespeople have a common currency of exchange. All churches will be employment centres where families could seek employment similar to a union hall, where the workforce is monitored to sustain work ethics and fair conditions. Unemployment would not be a starving family situation, as currency is owned by the people, controlled by Christ, and any person who is temporarily unemployed will have a consistent payment until he or she is employed. There will be much to do, homes to be built for the homeless and families alike, where the aged or disenfranchised can seek refuge. All major corporations will be split ownership with 51% owned by the church. All natural resources are the property of the people. Again, all churches will be employment centres where families could seek employment similar to a union hall, where the workforce is monitored to sustain work ethics and fair conditions. There will be much to do. That's a reinforcement of what I said before in the previous slide. Uh, all natural resources are the property of the people, not a greed-driven stock market theft, as is the case worldwide presently. There will be no currency trading. No nation will be armed, as is the case worldwide. And as the prophet Isaiah wrote, spears will be beaten into plowshares. Isaiah 2, verse 4, quoting, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. From Micah 4.3, And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk, every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God for ever and ever. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast off a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even for ever. Then Joel ten sorry, Joel three ten beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Pope Benedict XVI, when he received Vatican III, he said it just makes so much sense. He then knew the Lord had it all and implementing this to be his priority. At that time, he was aware he would be Pope once again. I had renamed him Petrus Romanus, Peter of Rome. And when he uploaded his apostolic letter, he spoke of himself as the reincarnate Peter II. He had grasp immediately that heaven comes to the earth on the trail of the dragon. As for Francis, his comment was, who is he to do that? Christ, that's who.
The key of the House of David is Isaiah 22, 22. My official body weight is 222 pounds. The name Jesus is 74 in English gematria. I am 74 inches tall. Lucifer is also 74 in English gematria. I arrived back here on the earth when my mother Daphne Golightly conceived of the Holy Spirit. I have two angels, Gabriel and Michael. Daphne had been very ill with the birth of my sister, suffering kidney failure, and had spent 13 weeks in hospital. Her doctor advised her not to have any more children. She, a Catholic, practiced abstinence. She told me when her doctor told her she was pregnant, 11 months after her final sexual intercourse with her husband, Reginald Marshall, I was reborn, February the 5th, 1942. Like I, she was meticulous for dates and a mind for details. This mystified both her doctor and my mother. What they did not understand, it was a conception by the Holy Spirit, as I being the father Yahweh, I cannot have a father, heavenly or earthly. Her husband, Reginald, he was not that intelligent and due to the War, men were scarce and women openly invited he and his brother Jack in for a cup of tea, so to speak. So he was not concerned with marital abstinence. However, he could count and he knew an 11 months pregnancy was impossible and therefore Daphne had been with another man that was in her mind, his mind rather. For as far back as I can remember, he was cruel, sadistic, sarcastic and beat me almost daily for trivial infractions. However, he was dealing with God, and by the age of two I could speak fluently and explained the Great Pyramid to my half-brother, Ronald. He, 8.88 years older than I. I had resurrected from the dead on April 5, 33 AD, Jerusalem time, and precisely 1910 years later, Daphne conceived of the Holy Spirit on April 6, 1943 in Sydney, Australia. This date and my rebirth date, January 11, 1944, it's what, what scripture calls the key of the house of David. Calculating from the first key, April 6, 1943, to the birth of Lucifer, July 30, 1956, is a period of 694 weeks and six days. And as Australia is one day ahead of Germany, this 694 weeks and five days. George Ganswain was born on that date, July 30th, 1956, 6945, from 6942, a sacred person, a male devotee by prostitution to licentious idolatry, sodomite, unclean. What we are dealing with is a man who has been a close confidant of Pope Benedict XVI from the time he was Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. Sister Maria Della Rosa, who was assisting Pope Benedict in writing his biography, sent us the previous email and photograph shown at the beginning of this PowerPoint. She, being a witness to the papal household and what later occurred, placed her in a very dangerous position, and since then she is missing along with Father Giuseppe. The word sodomite, Deuteronomy 23.17, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. This time was 13.32 years after I returned to the earth. 13.32 is 2 times 666. Below is the Babylonian numbering system. I have added George Gavin Swain to the above verse. And the value 953 multiplied by base by 6 equals 5718. Greek Dictionary 953 is to desecrate or profane from 952 from the base of 939, accessible, that is by implication of Jewish notions, heathenish, wicked, profane person. Hebrew 953 from 952 in the sense of 877, a pit, hole, especially one used as a cistern or a prison, cistern, dungeon, fountain, pit, hell. 
Now, I also want to draw your attention to Pope Benedict XVI, who has been betrayed by his confidential friend of many years in the Vatican, George Ganswain, who presented papers to the Pope to sign and then forwards them on. When we were communicating with the Pope, Ash asked him, do you have personal phone numbers with the commander of the Swiss Guard or anyone in a high position to come to your aid? Benedict's reply was, well, whenever I contacted them, I just sent a letter to them through the mail, but I was never told the address or postal code. They added it on the letter, the Jews. Pope Benedict's personal secretary was Gauguin Swain. You can watch videos on the YouTube, A Day in the Apostolic Palace. Gail Ganswain constantly at the side of Benedict, bringing him documents to sign and removing them. Gail Ganswain, he the man who laid his swoon over, born July 30, 1956. The Pope born on April 26, 1927. Actually, it should be the 16th. So the Archbishop was 2957 weeks old 